Welcome, 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 welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We are back with another one. We're going to get into Marlena Sparza and Lachucky Alanez, Gabriel Alanez, uh, in, in a rematch of what was a really, really close competitive fight. Controversial. A lot of people saw this a lot of different ways. Uh, before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie, all forms of social media. Uh, the Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight, showing you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Uh, the odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. I uh, show you how to make money every single week. This week is no different. Join the Patreon. The link is in the description. It's also in the banner below. The Patreon gets you the lock of the week. It's just five dollars a week. Um, get your as to bookie anything. Um, the free T-shirt involved. There's a whole bunch of perks, all that and more. Join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Please uh, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. All right, y'all. Uh, let's get into, also, the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene uh, on YouTube. Join Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Lots of interviews with Marlene Esparza on Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, and also, guys, hit the like button, y'all. Please hit that like button. All right, let's get into this. Um, so, the first fight between Esparza and... Uh, Chucky was was really really interesting. Um, there's always one judge that really really likes the Sparza. You, you you go through a Sparza's fights, and at least one judge has her winning every single round of a hyper competitive fight. It's basically three fights in a row, and this can't be a coincidence anymore. You go back to her fight at the Alamo Dome on the Ryan Garcia card, and it was two judges. Wilfredo Esperon and Jose Reyes in a 50-50 fight, in, in a fight that some people thought Esparza lost, had her winning every single round 100-90. to 90. Lisa Jampa had a somewhat more reasonable 97-93, which you can get to, but that's an extreme. It's still like on the extremes for Esparza. At the Dinkies Arena on the Virgil Ortiz card in Fort Worth, she fought another really competitive fight with Eva Guzman. David, and she probably won, she won that fight. Like, there's a fight that she won. David Ikebuchi had it 99-91, 10-1. The other two had still a far too wide 8-2. So 9-1 and 8-2. <clears throat> and then in, in, in a fight... That the majority of the spectators probably think she lost at the AT&T Center in San Antonio against Chucky back last year in the summer of 2023. Javier Alvarez scored at 99-91. Lisa Jampa had probably the best score of the night, 95-95. Esther Lopez scored at 97-93. So in a fight that I thought was probably a draw, maybe 6-4 for Sparza is how I saw it. I thought a draw was probably the right card, but I could see 5-5 five, five or 6-4 for, for Esparza, but other people had it for Chucky. Some people had it wide for Chucky. It depends what you're looking for. Javier Alvarez somehow had it nine rounds to one. So you see the trend here, right? There's at least one judge who really, really likes uh, Esparza. Lisa Jampa is a good judge. She usually gets it about right. And then there's a third judge. Or sometimes Steve Morrow, David Ikebuchi, Sergio Caez all really, really like Esparza. This isn't a coincidence anymore. It's not an accident. It's like the one judge that really always likes CJ Ross or whoever, Adelaide Burr, that really, really, really likes Canelo. It's not a coincidence anymore. It's not. What, the, what is Esparza and that version of Canelo had in common? Well, they're both Golden Boy fighters. So, let's get into Esparza. Selection shots well. She's good. Good timing in exchanges. She's a good boxer. Good fundamental skills. Doesn't have elite hand speed. 
doesn't have a lot of power, has excellent lower move, but she's really, really, really developed her skills. You can see the amateur pedigree. You can, you know, she's Olympian. She's really, really maxed out her talents. Good straight forward, you know, good straight punches. She stays calm. She's extremely calm in the pocket. Extremely high ring IQ. Great head movement. She picks her shots really, really well. She's a good counter puncher. A lot is going to need to take her shots and uh, get out. She can't stay on the inside with her because that's where she's going to do well. It's going to be a really difficult fight. And it's such a competitive fight. As far as she's got that good lead left hook, she can make you miss. She's, she's good in the pocket. But she's a little bit slow. And she can be beaten to the punch. You know, when you look at just like kind of the, the, the natural talents, like the stuff you're born with, the, the God-given stuff, Asparza really doesn't blow you away. She's got to be perfect or close to it. She's got to fight her fight, and she's got to execute it near perfectly to win, and she's been doing that. And I don't have any reason to think that she's not going to do that. She's getting a little older. I think she's 34 now. She does a lot of things well. She's really good in exchanges. She counters really well. She's got a good left hand. She, she picks her shot. She changes level. She does so many things really, really well. She uses her jab well. She disguises her punches well. She's trained exceptionally well. She's coached exceptionally well. She's learned the fundamentals. She knows how to fight. Alanez is the better athlete. She's quicker. More reflexes. She's got the better twitchy speed. She's got decent speed. She's long. Good combinations. She throws and flurries. She flurries really well. She can score. She kind of shows the judges what the judges want to see. She wants to march forward. She's a high volume fighter. Throws straight shots. I mean straight shots down the middle. She uses her reach. She doesn't pull her punches. She's good. She seems to have a little bit of pop. She seems to hurt people. Good volume. Good combos. Like, it, it seems like she can get stopped, and she can also show the, the judges what they want to see to score rounds for. Her. But that didn't happen. They didn't score for any as far as a fight. And, and, and I'm not saying these fights are rigged. I'm just saying there's always a judge. But it's Lisa Joppa, who I give credit to all the time, who I think is a terrific judge, seems to always get her about right. And, and, and there's always one other judge. Who gets it horribly wrong. Every time she fights. This is three in a row. Sometimes all the when, when Lisa Joppa wasn't involved. All three judges got it horribly involved, horribly wrong. So what I would do. If I was Golden Boy. I would try to keep Lisa Joppa off the fight. And get someone else in. And, and get David Ikebuchi in. These horrible refs. These horrible judges. That square every round for her. In 50-50 fights. You know. I, I was sitting ringside. At the uh, fight with uh, Fujiaka. And we're looking at each other. And we're like, did Esparza lose? And then two of the three judges, Jesse Reyes and Wilfredo es uh, Esperon, score every single round for it. It's like, this is unbelievable. This is amazing. Like, what fight? How is this? What happened? So, it's going to be interesting to see how this fight... <clears throat> I think this is a 50-50 fight. I really do. But I think the judges throw this in the way of Esparza. Esparza is a friend of mine. I like her a lot. She's a beautiful person. She's a wonderful person. She's like one of the nicest people in boxing. She's honest. She's sincere. And I believe she thinks she beat Chucky. A lot of people thought she beat Chucky. So I'm not... But that was a very competitive fight. In which a lot of people think she lost also. Right? It was pretty split. So let's take a look on how we're going to make money on this fight. Because this is a fight we can make a little bit of money on. Fight to go the distance. This is this is the bet we really like. Fight's almost certainly going to go the distance. It's minus 750. This is going up and up and up. So we're going to put a two times bet on that. So whatever your normal bet is. We're going to put a two times bet, double that bet, make that profit, $27 in this case. And then on the other bet, we're going to take Marlene Esparza by decision. 
We're going to put half a bet on that. I don't love this bet. I think this is a 50-50 fight. But the judges always seem, always seem to score for a sponsor, and they score wide for it in fights she may have lost. I, you can't, it's not, a, it's not a coincidence anymore. You can't do this three times in a row and say this is a coincidence. Marlena Sparza, by decision, is plus 100. I, I don't love this. Like, it, if you're asking me, my kind of gut instinct is that Marlena Sparza wins this fight by robbery. It's kind of what I think. So, I'm going to uh, put a half a bet, because I can't be totally confident on it. We're going to make $50 on that bet. So, this whole bet here, we're going to wager $250. We're going to make 76 on it. It's not terrible odds. What, the bet we really like is to, to go the distance. Like, it's almost a certainty. We're going to hit on that. If we miss on Esparza, we only take half a hit. right? If, if, if the decision goes the other way, we only take a little hit there. We only take a little hit on Esparza losing. I, I think she gets the decision here. Um... But that's what we got. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm sorry. Fifty dollars, half a bet on a Sparza on a hundred. You know, half a bet on a Sparza to win, which pays plus a hundred, which pays even money. And then minus seven fifty, we do that twice to go the distance. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight, showing you how to bring down the house and consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Uh, it's February. Uh, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Five dollars a month gets you all the perks, gets you the lock of the week, show you how to make money every single week. Uh, we got other things. We got Virgil Ortiz. We're going to show you how to make money on that because those props fell. The props fell after we bet. Uh, so jo join the Patreon. We're going to get all types of tips. Lock of the week. Ask the bookie anything, request a video, request a breakdown, free t-shirt, all types of perks, five dollars a month. Link is in the description. Uh, it's Feb it's April 26, 2024, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless.